Sailing in a remote paradise comes with a price. Uncomfortable anchorages, difficult shore access, and sometimes bugs. Soon we are heading to an even more remote island and we're low on food. So we want to reprovision and fuel up. But we've been told the anchorage at the main town nearby is horrible. So we have another plan. We were leaving Tawata and heading to Hiva'oa. We'd heard the main anchorage on the south side of the island was terrible, so we, along with our friends, had the bright idea to head to the north side of the island where the anchorages were supposed to be more comfortable, rent a car, and drive to the main town to get diesel and do some provisioning as we were quite low on food. So we pulled up the sails and we're on our way. Today we're sailing just 12 nautical miles. We're going from Tawata to a northern anchorage on Hiva'oa. It's supposed to be, of course, really beautiful as everything is around here, but with some hiking trails and a freshwater spring, maybe a waterfall. The last anchorage was beautiful, but it was really difficult to get into the beach. We had to anchor the dinghy off and swim to shore. And it really was kind of a small section of beach. There was no hiking, so we couldn't really walk too much. But it was gorgeous, and we were able to hang out with some cruisers there, so it was a lot of fun. But on to the next. Sailing is a bit tricky here now because the island is so big and the winds are coming from the east or southeast usually. And so the island actually blocks the trades and diverts the winds. Then the wind has now come around and is coming from directly behind us. And it dropped considerably also because the island blocks a good amount of the wind. We've got the engines on and we still have the main up but probably when we turn the corner around the tip of the island, we're gonna be going pretty much east. And so we'll be going directly into the wind. So we'll drop the sail and just head over into the anchorage. Hi, Yodi. Such a pretty girl. We've turned the corner of the tip of the island and it's amazing how kind of dry and arid this side of the island is. You can still see all of the clouds, so the moisture gathering on the high cliffs of the island, but then the moisture doesn't make its way down on this side. We are very close to the anchorage. We've just got to turn this corner into the bay and drop the hook. It was wild how unique each anchorage in the Marquesas had been. The landscape's appearance depended on its exposure to the wind and sun and its altitude. Okay. Okay, I did it. All right, well, we are anchored. Took a couple of attempts just to kind of find where we felt comfortable. It is so different here. It's like a desert oasis. It's really beautiful, but a bit of a tricky anchorage. The wind comes from kind of 360 at times, and it's a pretty narrow anchorage, but I think we're in a good spot. All right, we are going in to check out what's supposed to be a freshwater wading pool and a waterfall. So the dinghy landing situation has been pretty difficult actually. And the shore here is very steep. I mean, it says you can bring your dinghy ashore, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna anchor out and swim in. <laughs> The landing on the beach was actually easier than I expected. And I wanted to film back there because it's so beautiful. It's a black sand beach, but this very nice man on a four wheeler met us over there and 
is guiding us towards the pool. So he seemed to want us to follow him. So we are doing just that. <laughs> it is stunning. A huge thank you to our patrons. We are so grateful for your support. If you'd like additional content and real-time updates, consider joining the Harbors Unknown community on Patreon. These are pamplemousse. They're kind of like a grapefruit, but sweeter. A very nice man was showing Fabio some of the items he makes. Ah, like an axe. Uh -huh. Wow. Marquesian artisans are renowned throughout French Polynesia for their beautiful carvings. There were animal heads all over. I believe hunters keep the heads of the animals they slay. There's tons of pamplemousse. It's so meticulously maintained too. It's beautiful. And this behind me is the freshwater little lagoon. <laughs> Not a hot tub. Okay, got it. Going in. <sighs> How's it, Kristen? It's, it is chilly. Definitely refreshing. This feels good. Like I've been so hot. It's great. Yeah. That was very refreshing. And so now we are going to go buy some pample mousse and go back. This was the most efficient method we'd seen for husking a coconut. Simple yet effective. One minor detail is we forgot we swam to shore. So fortunately, Lizzie and Steve brought their kayak. So we're gonna use their kayak to get back to the boat. <laughs> we, well, we can put this in the uh, kayak and come back here. <laughs> the situations we find ourselves in. Bobby was taking all the bananas and pample mousse and coconuts to the dinghy with the kayak. <laughs> If you're enjoying this video, give it a thumbs up, leave us a comment down below, and be sure to subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. Tell it the contrast of this black sand beach with the vibrant green of the palm trees and the mossy green on the hill is so beautiful. It's just so different from what I've seen before. We picked up anchor the next morning to head to Hanayapa, a nearby bay with a town where we'd heard you could rent a car and then drive to Atuana, the main town on Hiva'oa. We're still in need of diesel and groceries as we hadn't yet found any meat and we were running quite low on fresh food. How's it going, Captain? Super duper. What's going on? Uh, we're just motoring to uh, the next anchorage. There's no wind this morning. Which is good because it would be on the nose. Sale. Yeah, exactly. It'd be like on the nose. Yeah. 
and uh, it's very little swell. The water is relatively flat for the Pacific Ocean. Hopefully, it's a better anchorage than last night, less rolly. Yeah. Yeah. Then we're gonna have to go do some provisioning because we're running low on food. <laughs> food. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. This is, I think, the lowest we've been in a while. Yeah. But we, it's funny how we still always find stuff. I'm easy. You know, you look at your refrigerator, there is nothing inside, and still you find something to eat. <laughs> I could not get over the beauty of this coastline. The vibrant greens, rusty reds, golden grass, and chocolate brown rock looked like a painting. We picked up a little bit. It was really like six knots this morning with flat water when we left, and now it's 14 knots on the nose with some waves. Thanks, thankfully, we're still in the lee of the island a little bit, so the waves are not that bad. But the wind is picking up. We only have three miles to go, so... Yeah, it's only eight miles total, right? Yeah. It's beautiful here. While filming the coast, I spotted a waterfall cascading over the rocks. It was like a fantasy world. Boats soon came into view and we made our way into the anchorage. You can see the bridle lines jumping in the water, Dragon. indicating the anchor was dragging on the bottom. Okay. Give me that good 1800. Fortunately, the anchor eventually hooked and we could tell it was holding because we reversed the engine to 1800 RPMs and the boat didn't budge. We're stuck. Stuck. Good. Another beautiful anchorage, and uh, there's a town here. So we're gonna try and rent a car so that we can drive down to the main town. But that main town we've heard, the anchorage there is horrible. Everyone says it's just absolutely terrible. So that's why we came around to the north side so we can anchor, so we could get some good night's sleep, hopefully, and then just rent the car, drive down, get provisions, diesel. And so we're just going to have a little bit of breakfast, going to cut up this pample mousse, one of the ones that we got yesterday. See, the rind is super thick. Very similar to a grapefruit, but not so bitter. What do you think? Delicious. Yeah. Sweet. Mm -hmm. Flavor. It's got like a fruity, flowery. Mm -hmm. It is. It's very floral. Sitting on deck just before sunset, we noticed a blowhole on shore and thought it was so cool the way the water sprayed up through the rocks. We were also amused to see goats clambering along the coastline. So we came to the main port in Hiva'awa to get diesel and to uh, do some provisioning because our plan to anchor on the north side and rent a car and then come down here did not work out. There were no cars available to rent. It was really hard to get to shore. So we're here in this little bay in Hiva'awa and
and we have to walk a little bit to the gas station. We filled up the diesel cans and now Fabio's, we walked them back and he's going back to get the rest of them. It's uh, definitely challenging. So you wanna like fuel up as much as you can at once and just kind of be done because it's not easy. Right over here is the gas station. Fabio made four trips walking back and forth with the jerry cans while I stayed with the diesel at the dinghy dock. We got back to the boat and unloaded the jerry cans. Filming this kind of stuff is difficult for us, so we missed some bits here and there, which brings us to the reason why we didn't film trying to find a way to get to shore in the last bay and our trip to Atuana. We were quite frustrated that at least one of us was going to have to swim to shore again, which would make the whole process of getting the jerry cans and groceries back to the boat quite difficult. Then we had to motor to the main town. We know drama performs well on YouTube, but in those moments, we really didn't feel like filming. We hope you understand. You bring one up. All right, now that we've gotten some diesel, we're gonna go in and figure out where to leave our trash and walk to town for some provisioning. It's like a mile and a half walk, I think. We're gonna try and find a ride. Uh, but yeah, that's the mission. I'm gonna let the sun shine in the day. It was a pretty tight squeeze to get the dinghy through, so I was pulling the line while Fabio used the other tender to push himself along. What's that? We'll tie in the back. Okay. Another cruiser recommended we tie the stern to prevent the dinghy from going under the dock. When the tide comes up, the dinghy could get stuck under there, which we definitely didn't want. All right, we dumped the trash right by the gas station, and now we are hoofing it to town. And there is Wanderlust. Hello, horsey. Smells delicious. Yeah, gardenia. So good. Coconut. Yeah. Oh. It's cracked. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So many hot peppers. There's mango. Mango too. Yep. Look, it looks like a water bowl for the horse. Yeah. <laughs> There's Wanderlust again through the trees from the other side of the bay. Get some roosters and chickens. We were just saying, this is probably the first time that we've thought that bikes or some kind of scooters or something would be good to have on the boat. Because it's a good little walk here, but it's okay. We have to say that probably very often in order to buy them because storing them, everything rusting, that kind of deal, so. It's pretty cute, they make these shade structures for small plants. I'm always so curious to see what the stores are like. Here, it seemed like a very small Walmart because of the variety of products, from soda to seeds to pastries and veggies. I have eggplants. How much is Skippy? $15 for a jar. Oh my god. Good thing we bought a lot at home. At Panama. Jam. 
Nutella, $13. Come on. $13. Wow. <laughs> they have cookies that you like, those kind of cookies. All right. So we've got our haul. Oh, oh we're definitely. Yeah. We just got a ride from these nice people. Apparently, they don't really have taxis here. Well, the restaurant isn't open yet, so we are going to be hoofing it back to the boat. <laughs> and yeah, so we got our haul from the store. It was like 200 bucks. Food is not cheap. Strong leg bull. Strong leg bull. <laughs> We're hoping some kind soul will give us a ride. I think the magic eight ball says outlook not good. <laughs> yeah, we have to put a stern anchor. Not too happy about it, but <laughs> we're in a very tight spot. So yeah. First time we use this uh this is a, a spade, it's aluminum. It's a great anchor. It's Our right. neighbor came over and said they were putting out their so stern anchor. So once one starts putting a stern anchor, everybody has to put a stern anchor. Yeah. What do you mean? Our neighbors decided to put a stern anchor to keep their bow pointed into the swell caused by the current and wind. If one boat puts a stern anchor, then their neighbors also have to put a stern anchor. Otherwise, the boats may swing into one another. We're reluctant to put a stern anchor because you have to pull it up by hand. And if it's stuck in the mud like happened to the winds in this very bay, it's not much fun. Fabio first threw in a trip line tied to a fender, making it easier to pull up the anchor. Almost. Almost. The line was short by just a little bit, so Fabio tied another line to the black line, which was attached to the anchor. Are you here or to the winch? Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Well, it seems that the stern anchor is set, but our neighbors did come over and say that their stern anchor wouldn't grab on the rocks. So now we're the only one with the stern anchor, but seems to be fine. And it's keeping us away from this steel boat. So I think we'll be good. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. So we want to share with you all of the good things, but also some of the reality. And the reality is sometimes there are lots of bugs and you don't even know you're getting bitten at the time. You just wake up at two in the morning, scratching like crazy, have hundreds of bites. And so I have them all over my arms. They're not even as bad as they were because this is like a couple of days old all over my legs. So there's a little dose of reality. Paradise comes with a price. If you'd like to see more of what boat life is really like, watch this video and be sure you're subscribed to the channel.